settle, please? Hi, I'm Scott Jeske, the writer and director of the sci-fi horror short film Containment, and I'm going to walk you through some of the tricks that we use to make this short film. Containment, for me, was really an exercise in pulling together a budget and really doing everything right. A huge part of the process was pre-production and making sure everything was planned down to the letter. Because we only had two nights to shoot an eight-page script, I wanted to make sure my storyboards contained as much information as possible. I really don't like drawing storyboards because it's hard for me to visualize physical space and camera placement with 2D drawings. So even though it can be a slower process, I used an app called Shot Pro, which you can download from the Apple App Store, probably the PC App Store as well, and I believe they have it on iPad. And I made all of my shots on rudimentary 3D sets. This was actually great because I was able to find angles I wouldn't ordinarily think of, and I could also get a sense of what shots aren't necessary. This also gave me a very rough understanding of how we could place lights and kind of gave me an idea for where shadows would fall, what the colors would look like a little bit. Just kind of gave me a little more information than your standard 2D uh, black and white drawings. In addition to storyboarding, my wife and I sat down and did some detailed script breakdowns so we could fully get a handle on props, stunts, budget, etc. Sometimes it's great to just get out and shoot something, but for this film, we really wanted to put ourselves through the paces of doing things right and being overly prepared, because we knew it was going to be a tough shoot. Because we wanted to do this right, I initially looked into renting a RED camera, or a Canon cinema camera that shoots 4K. Because I typically shoot 4K personally, it was kind of a must for me. However, a 4K camera meant that a lot of the budget would have to shift. So my DP and producers suggested we try out the C100 Mark II, which was drastically cheaper to rent. My DP and I did a test, and the results absolutely blew me away. Some of the shots were stunning, at least for me, and the color quality and look was exactly what I was hoping for. After seeing those tests, I decided color was more important to me than 4K. Another trick that we employed on set as a way of saving time was to shoot the whole thing on a 24-70 to 70 zoom lens. My poor DP was a good sport considering I only let him change the lenses once during the whole shoot. But when I saw the test footage, I decided that lens was all we needed. I also loved the lens flare, the sort of round flares that it gave off. It really reminded me of an 80s Spielberg film like E.T., for example. So for the opening shot, I had a very clear idea in my mind of what I wanted it to look like. An average camera isn't going to pick up stars in most instances unless it's a Sony a7S. So I knew this would need to be a visual effects shot. Starting off, we did a tilt Car. down. We had a light stand with a tennis ball because we knew there would be a sign telling the unsuspecting couple to keep out. Which I didn't realize until after the film was done that the sign was kind of on the wrong side of the road. So I added another sign across the street just to kind of make it seem like maybe they were facing both ways. In After Effects, I did a simple track of the tennis ball and used that to map in some stock images that I sort of grunged up in Photoshop to make look like rusty old signs. I also used a stock picture of stars and composited that into the sky. For the car sequence, I had a very specific and stylized look in mind, so I knew we would need to create a set and shoot on green screen. We used our location's driveway and set up our lights and green fabric just on the side of the house. A few months later, my wife and I finally got around to filming the background plates. We hopped in a car and drove around a park for about 20 minutes to film multiple backgrounds. I also used a battery-powered light to illuminate the trees. Once I finally had the plates, I blurred them with a lens blur that matched the depth of field and used After Effects to composite the shots. To really sell it, I downloaded a glass texture and overlaid it on top of the background plates. Then for the final touch, I used a camera shake wiggle gesture in After Effects to sell the bounciness of a car. But you're staying at my dorm room anyway. <laughs> I mean, you said you loved me, right? So let's talk about the actors. Having professional actors was an absolute game changer, and it's worth devoting what you can from a budget to pay for actors, because the difference in quality is absolutely worth it. These two had all their lines down, and sometimes they knew the script better than me. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. I'll go in there real quick, scope it out, 
I'll be back before you know it. So for this shot, I actually sat in the back of the car with my DP. When I called action, I had the alien, or in this case, my little brother, crouch while we backed up at full speed. We reversed the shot in post. This allowed us to be inches away from him and move at a very fast speed without having any risk of actually hitting him. We did the same thing for the exterior shot. Oh, I'll stop. It was really important to me to show as little of the creature as possible. One, because he looked ridiculous in his skin-tight skeleton suit and xenomorph mask. Please don't tell Ridley Scott. <laughs> and two, because even though it's cliche, it's typically scarier when you see less, as we all know from Jaws. I fully intended on printing some fake license plates to really sell that the two of them are somewhere in upstate New York and to cover my actor's plates. On the day I forgot, so I photoshopped this vanity plate and motion tracked it in After Effects. A few have picked up Gavin's nod to his community college, which he lovingly refers to as SU, even though it's not a university. I just drove all the way down from SU, so I thought you might meet me halfway or something, but you know. It's cool. My director of photography really did an amazing job realizing my vision. We met early and talked him through multiple references where there were strong traces of red and yellow lighting. We also talked about how to light the woods in a way that was both believable and stylized. We primarily used two 2K equivalent LED panels from Kame TV, and since we were shooting in the woods, I rented six V-mount batteries to keep the lights mobile. This really allowed flexibility uh, for us to just move the lights around at will. A lot of our approach to lighting was a large bounce for soft key lighting and backlighting the forest as a whole. When we moved into our second night of filming, there were way too many shots in my storyboards to cover, especially because we were expecting a freezing rainstorm, of course. So here I cannot stress enough how important a good AD is. My friend Zach Griffin walked the set with me and my DP, then sat us down to see how we could consolidate shots. This was pretty stressful, but was invaluable to getting the film done in the ambitious timeline. A big priority for this film was making sure that the actors felt safe and well prepared for all the running and stunt work. Oh, good call. You gotta be safe. Right. So my advice to any budding filmmakers out there, or even experienced filmmakers, is never wait till you're on set to try something with the actors that they may not be comfortable with. Always have an open conversation with them before you even arrive on set, and explicitly explain to them your plan. Don't do anything without first getting their consent, or don't try anything that they may not be comfortable with. Have a conversation with them ahead of time. So for this stunt shot, we ordered a crash mat and various pads for elbows, knees, chest, etc. We had special ropes and cuffs with soft uh, interiors to prevent rug burns, etc. The tricky thing was we needed to have two guys dragging Gavin without being able to see them. So the secret to this shot was the lighting. Once we held the light directly over the actor, the guys pulling him were virtually invisible in the fall off. One interesting surprise that came up on set was that our location, which we rented, which we hadn't actually scouted, was literally on top of a mountain, which meant the woods on either side were much more narrow and sloped than we anticipated. You wouldn't be able to tell from the film, but we basically had a perimeter of a few hundred yards, and we basically shot the whole thing in a circle. So we moved the backlighting to make it feel like we were in different spots, but it was all the same place just shot in multiple directions. So this little sequence was kind of a doozy. It worked really well in my head, but it was hard to show the action without explicitly showing the creature. I think using extra bits of footage in the edit helped it, and the final product works, the lesson here, though, is to shoot multiple options, even if you have the time, which in our case, we did not. I should also mention that this shoot was not for the faint of heart. Uh, the first night was mild with almost no wind, but night two in the woods was freezing. And you'll see in one of the shots that it actually started to snow. It looked amazing in some of the shots, but we needed to keep continuity, so in the edit, we decided to use the more mild shots. 
I love this. Okay. I love this now. So this final shot was a post-production nightmare. Because of the way I would lit it, the light caused almost a gradient and even blurred some of the fine lines that would make rotoing easier. I also probably should have used a green screen for the portion with Claire, but we were in the last minutes of our schedule and everyone was freezing and exhausted, so I made the wrong call and rushed the shot. In the end, I think the shot works. You get the idea that it's a government facility in the woods, but you can always learn from what doesn't work and what does. I hope you enjoyed watching this making of, and more importantly, I hope you learned something. Making a film takes a lot of tricks and problem solving for things you could never anticipate. But in the end, I think that's the most fun part of making films, and especially looking back on the making of films, how we solve those problems. Please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe if you like to see more of what I'm working on. Good. All right, great. Okay. <laughs> great. <laughs>